Well, good day. Hey, thanks for watching. And, and here's today's question. I'm looking at a region here. It's got the yellow and the, the blue made up of typical pattern blocks. And I'm going to ask this. If, if this region represents two thirds, then what would represent one? I want you to take a second. I want you to think about this. So go ahead and hit pause. And, and when you're ready to discuss it, then come on, come on back. All right, so I, I will assume, I will assume that you're back. Suppose that uh, this is two thirds. Now, maybe what you did is you tried first to knock out the third somehow, that you wanted to divide by three, because when you see a fraction, that's typically what you do. We, we think of cutting something into three pieces. But the key in, in, in this question is to think of that two thirds differently, that that two thirds is two copies of one third. In other words, what I'm looking at already represents two copies of something. And so I need to break up those two copies to get to that something. So so let's let's take this region and we'll split it up and we'll cut it sort of into two pieces here. I'll draw the divider line in there. Now that means that each of these now has to represent one third. Okay, so that means I have one third and one third, and if I wanted one, then all I would have to do is add one more third in here, and I would end up with three thirds, which is, of course, one. That's kind of cool. But uh, the, the counterintuitive part is that uh, I have to look at this as though I already have two copies of something. And, and so let's push this, let's push this a little further. Let's think about one divided by two thirds in the context of the question that we just did. That is asking how many copies of two thirds are in one. Well, we, we just realized that this is two thirds, but we also saw that uh, that two thirds is made up of, of halves. And so if I want to know how many uh, two thirds there are in one, how many two thirds there are in one? Well, there's one and a half one and one half of these two thirds, or if I were to think of it in terms of, of halves of the two thirds, there's one half of a two third, there's two halves of the two thirds, and there's three halves of the two thirds, which would tell me that there are three halves copies of the two thirds in one. I want to start off by thinking about one divided by one third. That's really asking me for how many copies of one third are in one. Well, we've got our one right here. How many copies of the one third would there be? Well, it looks like it looks pretty pretty basic that there would be there'd be three copies of this. So so now so now though the question is what is one divided by two thirds? Well, to do this, we need to think about the relationship between one third and two thirds. And, th and it's quite simply that two thirds is twice the size. So I've now doubled, if you will, I've doubled the size that uh, the one third would have covered. And I'm not going to have three of them as I, as I had before. I can play off of the three, but I'm not going to have, because I've doubled the size, it's only going to take half the number of copies. So I end up with three halves. What happens now if I were to uh, make this a little bit more generic? And, and let's think about one divided by one over b. So now instead of imagining this region being broken up into uh, three or four or five, it, it's, it's broken up into some arbitrary number b. And, and I want to know how many of those, how many copies of those pieces would it take to, to equal one? And really it, it seems pretty straightforward because it would take b copies of one over b to, to make one. So now if I want to think about this, I can, I can push it to one divided by a divided by b. Uh, without the a there, I know the answer would be b, but now I know that I've, 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 I've multiplied that region by, by, by some a. I have a copies of that, so it's going to take one over a times as many as before to equal one. And it's an exact parallel to the two thirds and three halves that we saw before. So now let's take the final step and let's let's consider the division C divided by A divided by B. Now from, from the problem we just did, I know that without the C there, the, the answer would be B divided by A. How, however, uh, what is the C doing? The C is saying I don't have just one, it's not just one, I now have C times that size. Uh, so that means that instead of uh, B over A copies, I'm going to need C times that B over A copy. And, and look at what we end up with here. We dividing by a fraction is really the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool, don't, don't you think? 